A lawsuit has been filed against the state of California in their current 10 day waiting period, which California gun owners are currently subject to any time they purchase a firearm. But now with the Supreme Court's recent decision in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin, a door has been opened up to re-challenge this California 10 day waiting period. This case we are gonna be breaking down is called Richards v. Bonta, and it was filed by SAF and FPC. This case aims to use the Bruin decision to once and for all get rid of the California 10 day waiting period. Now, before we dive deeper into this lawsuit filed to stop the California 10 day waiting period, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, which is Blackout Coffee. Blackout Coffee has some of the best coffee out on the market and they are huge Second Amendment supporters. If you buy one of their roasts, like the FBC roast, some of those proceeds will go directly to FBC and also GOA so that they can file lawsuits like this one here that we're talking about in the video. So go check out Blackout Coffee using the link down below. And if you use the code ARMSCHOLAR, you can get 10% off of your order. Now this case, Richards v. Bonta, is a new lawsuit challenging the California 10 day waiting period, but this is not the first case that has ever tried to strike down this 10 day waiting period in the state of California. In fact, a previous attempt to overturn this law made its way all the way up to the Supreme Court. That prior lawsuit was called Sylvester v. Becerra. Sylvester is probably a case many of you forgot about, but it ultimately did reach its final resolution back in 2018 and made its way up to the Supreme Court. Sylvester and now this Richards case challenged various California penal codes in various sections like section 26815. That is the California law that places a 10 day waiting period or a 10 day cooling off period that California calls it on any purchase and possession of firearms. Now in the Sylvester case, after a three day bench trial, a district court in that case did find in favor of the plaintiffs and found that the 10 day waiting period was unconstitutional. In reaching that decision, the district court applied something known as the intermediate scrutiny approach. The district court in that case concluded that California's 10 day waiting period was not reasonably tailored to promote an important governmental interest. California's main public interest argument for this law that they continue to put forward is that a cooling off period of 10 days is needed to prevent criminal conduct or other harm from potentially occurring. In the original Sylvester decision, the district court rejected evidence that this law would meet that type of goal. In reaching that decision, the district court noted that the studies used by California seem to assume that the individual does not already possess a firearm. California submitted no evidence about subsequent purchases, which was significant because a waiting period will not deter an individual from committing impulsive acts of violence or maybe something else if they already are in possession of a firearm that they came into possession prior. But even if some cooling off period is necessary, the district court found that California made no attempt to defend a 10 day waiting period in the lawsuit. And they found that the background check process will naturally create a waiting period of at least one day for 80% of all purchasers. The district court found that individuals who meet California's requirements for a concealed carry license are also uniquely unlikely to engage in the impulsive acts of violence that California was saying that they needed to stop. Therefore, on review, the district court in the original Sylvester case found that the 10 day waiting period was unconstitutional and he found that using intermediate scrutiny. The state of California then appealed that decision up to the Ninth Circuit, which is the California standard practice. The Ninth Circuit concluded on review that the test that should be used to evaluate these potential Second Amendment violations was the two-step approach, and ultimately they used intermediate scrutiny. The Ninth Circuit on review of the case held that California's law did in fact prevent gun violence by creating a cooling off period, and therefore they upheld the law. Then the plaintiffs in response to that, in response to the Ninth Circuit overruling the district court, they filed a writ of certiorari up to the Supreme Court. Ultimately, they wanted the Supreme Court to get involved with this issue. Now, the Supreme Court did in fact deny review, but in denying review, the Supreme Court, or essentially it was Justice Thomas, wrote a dissent. In his dissent, he stated that this court has not definitively resolved the standard for evaluating Second Amendment claims. Heller did not need to resolve it because the law there failed any of the standards of scrutiny that we have applied to enumerated constitutional rights. After Heller, the courts of appeals generally evaluate Second Amendment claims under intermediate scrutiny. Several jurists disagree with this approach. 
suggesting that courts should instead ask whether the challenge law complies with the text, history, and tradition of the Second Amendment. Although Heller did not definitively resolve the standard for evaluating Second Amendment claims, it rejected two proposed standards. The court first rejected a freestanding interest balancing approach, which would have weighed a law's burdens on the Second Amendment rights against the governmental interest it promotes. The court also rejected rational basis scrutiny. And further in his dissent, Justice Thomas pointed out that the Ninth Circuit had been using a watered down intermediate scrutiny standard that was more like rational basis, which again, the Supreme Court expressly rejected in Heller and McDonald. But he went on to state that the Ninth Circuit's deviation from the ordinary principles of law is unfortunate, though not surprising. He stated, as I have previously explained, the lower courts are resisting this court's decision in Heller and McDonald and are failing to protect the Second Amendment to the same extent that they have protected other constitutional rights. In the Sylvester dissent, Thomas is clearly stating that he was unhappy with the Supreme Court for continuing to refuse to hear Second Amendment cases and challenges, and also the continued refusal of lower courts like the Ninth Circuit, who was using the incorrect type of standard and was just simply deferring to the government's public interest arguments. We'll then flash forward to 2022, and Thomas finally got a chance to correct all of these issues. And he did that in the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin case. In that decision, Thomas struck down the use of the two-step approach and expressly stated that intermediate scrutiny should never be used in the Second Amendment context. Instead, text as informed by relevant history and tradition is the correct type of standard. Because of that Bruin decision, the prior Sylvester ruling, which again, Thomas wrote a dissent in, is now just completely essentially done away with. The legal analysis that was used by the Ninth Circuit is now invalid under Bruin, and that has opened the door for a new challenge, which we see here with the FBC and SAF lawsuit in the Richards case. In this lawsuit, SAF states that California did not first impose a waiting period until 1923 when it joined a few other states in doing so. But legislation enacted 132 years after the founding is irrelevant to determining the scope of the Second Amendment. Indeed, the Supreme Court in Bruin refused to even address any of the 20th century historical evidence offered by New York and its amici, since it does not provide insight into the meaning of the Second Amendment when it contradicts earlier evidence. Failing Bruin's historical test from the outset, California's waiting period laws must be declared unconstitutional and enjoined. SAF also points out that yes, Sylvester is a prior decision that came out of a California federal district court and also that the Ninth Circuit ruled in the Sylvester case. They state that plaintiffs acknowledge that the relief they seek is contrary to Sylvester, but Sylvester has been abrogated as Bruin expressly rejected the two-step approach used in Sylvester to reject a similar challenge to California's waiting period laws. California's waiting period laws and defendants enforcement of them are not analogous to any constitutionally relevant history and tradition of regulating firearms. So this is one of those cases I was waiting to see pop up. This is one of the more clear cut cases, especially coming out of the state of California, because litigation prior heavily had outlined this whole issue. There have been plenty of arguments made prior on the California 10 day waiting period, like I mentioned in the Sylvester case, and even it made its way all the way up to the Supreme Court where it got a dissent from Justice Thomas. And Justice Thomas in the dissent pretty much outlined what he was going to do or how he would have approached the Sylvester case if maybe the Bruin case existed prior to Sylvester. Now, of course, Bruin came after, but his dissent in Sylvester essentially foreshadowed what he ultimately would end up doing in Bruin. So this whole law is weak in many different ways, and it will also be interesting to see if Judge Benitez is the one who has assigned this lawsuit. But if you guys wanna learn more about what's going on with other states and also what's going on federally, I recommend you watch some of these videos here on the screen. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by arm scholars and this nation will be maintained by arm scholars.